We are prepared to go as far as possible in respect to the prejudice of state enterprises on the understanding that the proceeds are not used to pay current bills, but are used to pay only public debt or to support public sector capital development. And fifth, we strongly support the use of private public sector partnerships on matters such as the revitalization of bridge stone and spike stone, which have not gone into decay, as ways by which the private sector's role in the economy can expand as government expenditure is brought under control. Leave it to us. If it is a problem, we will face it. Jump and allow this government. I choose to speak at this annual conference more fully than I have ever had at any previous conference <clears throat> on matters relating to the rule of law and the need for a new governance in Barbados. Barbados's progress has been based on a few things. High on the list, has been our long tradition of stability and good governance, the, the hallmark of which has been adherence to the rule of law, accountability and transparency by both the public and the, and the civil society in the conduct of their various affairs. That tradition of good governance is systematically being undermined. It is being undermined by the worst of tyrannies, the worst of tyrannies is a lawless government. At the very best of times, this DLP government has done wrong in spite of the law. At the worst of times, it has changed the law for the sake of wrong. By its actions, it has undermined public confidence in our state institutions. And he has set about to destroy some of these institutions for the sake of his own survival. The Democratic Labour Party came to power in part on the strength of a pretended commitment to good governance. But from the very outset, it was apparent that this was a commitment that was never intended to be kept, or at the very least, that they were willing to discard when it suited their purposes. My comrades, it bears repeating over and over again that on the eve of the last general election, the DLP erected billboards through this country in flagrant contravention of the town and country planning act. When this breach was pointed out to them, the callous and contemptuous response of the then leader of the opposition, one David Thompson, was that by the time the chief complainer could do anything about it, the election would be won. Surely, behave. Surely, this contempt for laws at that time in opposition ought to have forewarned us of what was to come. Can it be reasonable to expect a private citizen to complain, complain with the Tantanian Act or any other act in the face of such outrageous defense of the law by the Democrat? It also bears repeating that the Transport Board clearly prohibits the Transport Board Act clearly prohibits the Transport Board from selling petroleum products. Yet this administration a flagrant breach of the clear intent of this statute has established a regime where the transport board is now selling diesel. It bears repeating that this administration, in breach of the Barbados Water Authority Act, installed one Army Walters into an unlawful position of executive director and placed the management of the Water Authority in its hands. And the wish would be money under the total of the When the act stated clearly that the management of the authority was the duty of the general.
general manager and the general manager alone. This administration persists in giving national housing properties to tenants in circumstances where it is unlawful for the National Housing Corporation to make gifts of any of its properties under the Housing Act. We have pointed out to the Democratic Party in Parliament that they are acting in contravention of the Act and that if they intended to pursue this policy, the Act must be amended. But this advice has been ignored and continues to be. Is, is it any wonder, therefore, that in the halls of government, in Catholic, we are now reduced to the state of the wild, wild west? Is it not the wild, wild west? When a minister of the crown spits in the face of the longstanding doctrine of collective responsibility by directing the staff and management of the Barbados World Authority not to meet with the Minister of Finance. And is it not equally scandalous that such an assault on the principles of good governance should have been accepted and allowed to go unanswered by the Prime Minister and the Chairman of Cabinet? Perhaps he was innocent. How do we accept the bizarre situation of an arm of government, the Barbados Port Authority, which contracted in good faith and with the knowledge of the Minister of Finance for the construction and financing of a new headquarters facility, but then the Minister of Finance now appears to be refusing to sign the required letter of comfort. In its original manifesto prior to 2008, the DLP embraced the principle of the fatty calf by which they promised to enrich those who voted for the party at the expense of those who could not be, who could not be identified as its active supporters. It has to be a matter of deep national disgrace that the pre practice of the principle of the fatty calf has afflicted almost every major state and national institution in this country. Due to its high visibility, the CDC has become the most obvious and obnoxious manifestation of government's unjust man manipulation of the state agencies and institutions for its benefit. The government has transformed the new negative scars into an hour of undiluted partisan propaganda with the dual purpose of promoting the narrow interests of the DLP while silencing the legitimate voice of any contrary opinion in Barbados. The DLP has also been rampant in seeking to place its perceived supporters in strategic positions at the expense of others who were in legitimate occupation of those offices. The Barbados High Court recently vindicated the victimized former director of the UDC in circumstances that the court described and they put them as reprehensible in the extreme. But we would not and could not have anticipated in our practice that a DLP government will also come to interfere in the internal affairs of the Royal Barbados Police Force in a manner that is now turning out to be reprehensible in the extreme. For the first time in the history of our land, a significant number of senior public office, police officers have accused the Police Services Commission of unlawfully interfering in the diplomatic promotions within the institution. Police officers must be allowed to engage their careers beyond the reach of unconstitutional acts of discrimination against them. By its action, this government has been dishonoring the letter and the spirit of the Constitution in its treatment of the Royal Barbados Police. The threat, my colleagues, to our society is clear. For to destroy the institution of the Royal Barbados Police Force is to tear asunder the fabric of society, of security, upon which the country has always rested. The situation gets worse. Under the Constitution of Barbados, 
the judiciary, the judiciary is that arm of the state to which the citizen must resort if she, he or she feels aggrieved by acts of the state. In its discharge of its duty, the judiciary must maintain absolute independence from external control and must especially insulate itself against the power of other arms of the state. The DLP government has dangerously displayed contempt for the Constitution, for its conventions, and for the rule of law in this land, in the form and in the content of its relationship with the judiciary. The first sign of lawlessness emerged within the clouds that engulfed the demission from office of the former Chief Justice. After the retirement of the former Chief Justice, the institution of the judiciary was further undermined when a senior distinguished judge was required to act in that office for a period exceeding the year. The high office of Chief Justice of Barbados was further diminished by the manner in which the appointment of the present Chief Justice was mangled late one Friday evening. After a week-long debate in Essex, the DLP exploited its parliamentary majority and hastily summoned amending the Supreme Court of Judiciary Act to allow enfranchisement of a single individual in the, the high office of Chief Justice of Barbados. We also cannot ignore the reports of discontent within a bar association that is now reportedly threatening unprecedented strike action in protest against further deterioration within the administration of justice. The administration of justice has been further tarnished in the aftermath of a prosecutor suing the government for his failure to advertise the job that he has been performing for the last six years. Meanwhile, that position has been handed over to a former nursing assistant who has absolutely no experience in the courts. We can also point to the breakdown in good governance by the use of this government of constituency councils to do no more than to secure the ruling party self-serving incursions in the local community of Barbados for their partisan benefits. We have seen the absolute breakdown in governance in the manner in which this government has mangled the critical fear and has allowed the protection of its pal to trump the interest of, uh, of 35,000 Barbadian policyholders and investors. Justice will soon be done. As regards the situation of Agatel, ordinary citizens are being forced to seek relief from the courts from action by cabinet undertaken in defiance of the Tom Act. In 2016, comrades, this nation will celebrate the 50th anniversary of its independence. The best possible gift that can be conceived to salute this major milestone should be devising of a new structure of governance for Barbados that can serve the reposition government in the 21st century from a body of 20th century laws and systems to enable our system of governance to better meet the needs of our people in every aspect of their lives. We need to make greater provision for popular participation by the entire civil society in decision making and in this country's economic prosperity. There is also, above all, now a need for greater protection of our citizens from a lawless government. It must never happen again. And for greater fairness, greater transparency, and for social justice to be exercised in every aspect of our public and private affairs. Some of the matters which should be in place by 2016, and we assure you it will be in place by 2016, to make a new governance the real 50th birthday present for Barbados will include, first, a new constitution that focuses on the role of governance as opposed to the role of government. 
Secondly, a freedom of information act to provide greater transparency that balances the rights of individuals as against the capacity of government to complain. Third, the divestment of CBC yes. and the issuance yes. of broadcast licenses to facilitate an open environment for the flow of information. Fourth, the complete revamping of the structures of statutory organizations to reflect greater and more effective participation in them by the entire civil society.